Hi, everybody. It's Gina Kay, and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I am so glad to see all of you here. It's so exciting to have you. I skimmed through the comments, and there are people here from all over the world tonight, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. I'm so glad to have you here. Tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about letting, uh, letting out, letting go of pent-up emotion. You know, um, let me go back to the comments here. I'll leave the, uh, the banner up for a little bit. You know, tears are 1% water and 99% emotion, right? And once your inner cup is full, you have to empty it somehow. Crying may not solve all of the problems, but it sure helps you make sure helps make you feel better when that cup gets emptied. And scientists have long believed that we feel those influences physically, those emotions, and um, what we feel creates physical problems for us if we pen keep them pent up too long. I had a day to day. I um. So the last time I left my house and went somewhere other than work, and remember work is just like my house because it's, it was, it's just my family kind of going from one place to the other, um, was March 13th. That was the last time I was inside anywhere else other than home or work. And today after work, we got a lot accomplished. We got a lot of your orders out. And um, I was looking around at our cleaning supplies and I realized that we were starting to get low on disinfectant. So I thought since, since some of Wisconsin is opening back up and there's lots of guidelines that I would head to Target and get some disinfectant. And I was suited up. I was ready. It was warm out, but I still had my coat on. So this way I could take my coat off and throw it in the washer because it, you know, it's near the end of the season. So I got to do that anyway. I had my mask. I was ready to go. I had my glasses on just to kind of protect my eyes. And I walked into Target. I got there. I walked in. Parking lot was packed. And I walked in and there was a nice young man and he was disinfecting the handles of the carts. And he said, here you go. And I took the cart and I went through and I, I think it was me and maybe one or two other people in the whole store that had masks on. I was so disappointed and I was getting so emotional and I felt like I just wanted to say something. And Tom and I were talking about that. And Tom said, doesn't it kind of make you want to just say thank you to the people who are wearing masks? And that's exactly how I felt. I wanted to go up to every person, the, both of them, that were wearing masks and say, thank you. Thank you for you know protecting me and I'm protecting you. And I was so frustrated. So I grabbed my two things of disinfectant and I went through the checkout line. And I got outside and I had my sanitizer and I did my hands and and I just cried. I just I just got in the car and I cried. I was so emotional. I couldn't believe how many people didn't seem to care. Um, and I, I don't know that I necessarily would have cried if I hadn't let so many emotions just get pent up inside of me for so long. Um, that it just became so emotional. So I think it's important that if you feel something, just to let it out, relieve yourself of that pent up emotion. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to be strong. It's not being strong to, to, to not cry or to not just get angry or just scream into your pillow. Just get it out and you feel so much better afterwards. So I feel so much better being here with you guys tonight. Tonight, I am excited because I'm going to do a layout that is really, really fun. Um, and it kind of reminds me of what life has been like lately. I feel a lot like we're just kind of sitting inside our houses looking out the window at the world. So tonight, we're going to do a little window card. And um, 
It's an easy layout to do. I know I told I told you guys on the last live to make sure that you have some metallic cardstock and some metallic embossing powder. I still am going to do that this week, but I'm going to save that for our Friday night PJ party because Friday night, you know, we could do something really fun and crazy. And if we go over the hour, it's not that bad. So I think I'm saving that for Friday night. So if you still want to participate on Friday night, find some either metallic gold or metallic silver, copper, a cardstock and a coordinating um, embossing powder. It doesn't have to match. In fact, if it's not exact match, it's even a little bit better. But tonight we're going to do a window card. So I'm going to get my other screen up here. And I have a piece of cardstock. And I'm just going to quickly welcome everybody again. I know you guys are all, all, um, talking about yeah i know see everybody here on my live you guys are are doing the right thing you've got asks you're taking care of other people and remember you know the truth is it, you're not wearing the mask to protect yourself you're wearing the mask to protect other people and so when you wear a mask it's not because you're afraid to sick. It's because you don't know if you're carrying the virus and you want to keep other people safe. So think about it more as doing something for somebody else, not for yourself. That usually motivates people more if they're doing something for somebody else instead of their self. And I know that's true because I had diabetes when I was pregnant and I have never had such good blood sugar control as I did during those nine months of being pregnant each time because I am a much better diabetic for my children than I ever am for myself. So imagine that you're doing it for somebody's grandma or somebody's mom or somebody's child because now there's all these weird things. So, so uh, wear the mask, wear the mask. Don't make me cry. Okay, so tonight I'm going to do this window card. I'm going to start, I'm going to make some clouds first on my piece of cardstock. So this cardstock is a little bit bigger than what I need. And I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and I am going to just kind of cut some, I don't know, some hills and valleys here like that. Now, I know that some of you have some amazing cloud stencils and I've, show, I've shown other ways to make clouds in my other videos, but I'm gonna do this tonight because this is fast and easy and it's something that anybody can do even if you don't have um, the right kind of stencil. So I'm going to use one of the Simon Says Stamp blending brushes. I already have a lot of turquoise on here and I'm going to use a little bit of Ocean Mist ink. And I'm gonna get a little bit of ink on here and then I'm just going to, okay, so this piece of cardstock, I should tell you the measurements of this piece of cardstock first if you're playing along. So this piece of cardstock measures three and a half inches by four and a half inches. And I have that measurement like that on purpose. That's the size that I want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna just, take this uh, blending brush and I'm gonna mostly blend on this little um, piece of cardstock that I made and just let the edges kind of go over and touch the, my actual piece of cardstock that I'm gonna be working with. So you see what I did there? I just, it's very, very light, but that's what you want. You want it to be very light. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit more here. And you can see I'm kind of changing the position each time. Because real clouds, you know, they're all over the place. They're not perfect and uniform. Okay, get a little more ink on there. So I'm just kind of creating a little bit of a sky here, really. It's very relaxing to do this. Even if you don't have any mojo and you don't want to do anything more, you could make a few of these panels and just come for when you're ready to do some other kind of card. You can also flip it over and use the other side if it's getting too much the same. But I think you can kind of push it around a little bit and really make it different. Okay. Let's just getting close to the edge there, so it's hard to hold on. 
If I don't re-ink, then I go a little bit heavier onto the to the white part. Okay, so now let's see here. I'm gonna just do this down here. Try to hold that into place. You could purple tape it down if you want. And don't worry too much because a lot of this is going to be hidden. And that's why I'm using such a light color. And I'm going to add a little bit on the bottom here. You can go like this if you want. Just to add a little shape. Okay. So now I have that. Now I also have this stencil. This is called Nature's Elements. Um, if you don't have a stencil like this, you can just stop right there. It still looks like a really pretty sky, but I'm just going to add maybe a little bit of um, these puffy clouds. Just like that. So it's got a little bit of the, I'm just going right inside the cloud a little bit. You'll be able to see this better in the photos. Okay, so that just gives it a little bit, you kind of see a little bit of the puffiness in those clouds. So I don't know how easy or hard that is to see, but um, you get the idea. Just a very, very light, easy sky background. Okay, so now I'm going to get my Misty and I'm gonna decide what stamp to use. I already, I did a, a sample of this the other night. I was playing around just, actually I was just making cards and I thought this might be really fun to share. I used the You Make Me Smile stamp set and I know a lot of you have gotten this one recently because we've used it a couple times in some lives. So um, I think what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna use the Heartfelt Hydrangea stamp and then I'm going to show you the sample that I made with the other one so you can see it with both of these stamps. Okay, so I'm gonna put the Heartfelt Hydrangea coming in off the side like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick that up with the door of the Misty and I'm gonna ink that up with some black amalgam ink. I like the amalgam ink because you can use it with colored pencils, you can use it with Copic markers, you can use it with watercolor. So you can stamp it first and then decide what you're gonna use it with. Okay, so that looks nice. I think I'm in the mood for flowers. I don't know about the rest of you, but we've had the weirdest weather here in Wisconsin. On Mother's Day, it snowed. And then today it was 62. <laughs> um, tomorrow it's supposed to be 73. So, you know, Wisconsin weather, you never know what you're going to get. And that's why I still haven't moved my little seedlings into the outside yet, because I just don't trust it until after Memorial Day. That's what they say up here. That's what the farmers say. You don't plant until after Memorial Day. Okay, so for this flower, I'm going to I'm going to use a purple. So let me see. I've got a couple purples here. That's really blue purple. I think I'm going to use this purple here. And then, let me grab my pencil sharpener. I need to sharpen this pencil. So I'm using the I Point Orbit pencil sharpener. I have both the battery operated one and the electric one. Um, this is the battery operated one. The big difference between the two is the electric one has a metal casing in there and the battery operated one, it's plastic. They both work really well. And I like the battery operated one because I can sit on the couch and just have it sitting on the coffee table. I don't have to worry about finding a place to plug it in, but they're both really good. Okay, so I have this um, nail file here and I'm just going to sand the red off of this blending stump. And when I do that, I sand, like I file it, like I was filing on top of a nail, and I keep turning the blending stump as I go. 
And that removes the color, but it keeps it to a point because you're turning it, you're almost acting like a pencil sharpener, a human pencil sharpener. Okay. All right. The color I used for the clouds is Ocean Mist. Yeah, it's a good color for the clouds. It's really super soft. And, you know, you can always rub quite a bit of the color off of your brush onto like your tidy towel or onto a paper towel. And that will um, that will get rid of most of the color if you don't have this particular color, if you have a darker one. OK, so for this one, I'm just going to start doing some coloring at the bottom of each petal. Now, this technique that I'm going to show you with the window to make the window. I mean, it's super easy, and I'm sure a lot of you have done this before, but maybe not. Maybe for some of you, it's new. You can certainly make this card a lot more quickly if you use stamps that you don't have to color. But let's face it, coloring is very relaxing. It's very therapeutic. I enjoy it. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm using this purple, and the purple color that I'm using, I didn't tell you that, it's called violet. And I'm just coloring kind of close to where the petals appear as they though they are coming out of the center of the flower. Welcome, everyone. I see a lot of you still coming in. It's so great to see you all. I tried to match my shirt to purple. It's got a little hue of purple in it. <laughs> Trying to match my card projects. All right. So there, I've added some of that to each of those. And now I'm going to take my blending stump and I have a little dish here and I'm going to use some Gamsol. Gamsol is 100% odorless mineral spirits, but it is not the same kind of mineral spirits that you get in the hardware store. So please don't go and buy mineral spirits in the hardware store. It is not the same. This is an artist grade and it is much safer to use. I actually tried the other kind before I knew and I started feeling when I would work with it. And this, I never even, I mean, I can't smell it. I, it, it totally works well for me. So I just don't recommend going to the hardware store and picking up that kind of mineral spirits. You definitely want to use an artist grade. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dip my blending stump into the mineral spirits. And again, if you're new to um, using mineral spirits with a blending stump, the blending stump has to get saturated. So if you just dip it in like that and think that that's ready to go, it isn't. I definitely would um, kind of soak it in there for just a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to just blend out that color. And what I like about the, doing the sky behind this purple is these flowers, these hydrangea flowers, I've seen them where the petals were purple, but they kind of blended into a really pale blue. So I think the blue sky against this actually works in your favor. So you can see I'm just going in a circular motion and working that color out toward the edge. And I'm not worrying if I don't have enough color where it leaves it a little bit white. That's okay. I mean, that's kind of how these look anyway. This is such a relaxing technique. I really like colored pencils. I feel like I have a lot more control with them, especially if I do my Gamsol trick because Gamsol makes it look very much like you're blending, you know, with more than one color, but it just kind of breaks down the wax and the pencil and it just spreads it around. So you can see that's that's looking pretty good. I'm going to use this. Now, I've, I've only dipped a little bit into the Gamsol, so I probably need to color a little more here. You see some parts of this flower that I missed. Oh yeah, it really starts to come to life when you add the color. All right, so there's another little bit over here. 
And again, you know, I, I always like to do a disclaimer when it comes to coloring because I'm not a coloring expert, um, but I do like to have fun. And this is an easy way to have fun with colored pencils. The Gamsol really makes it easy. There are a lot of great people to follow to learn more about coloring. I'm not one of them. <laughs> but I can teach all the fun quick ways. All right. So I'm going to start on this one. We'll be able to see more of the blue in this one, which I think is going to work in our favor with the hydrangea. So more things are starting to open. I don't know if any of you guys started venturing out yet. Um, we are, um, we're still kind of staying close to home. I mean, we, we did do, we've done like um, instant cart where they deliver groceries and stuff like that. And we've done one takeout order since March 13th. I know we should do more takeout. I've never cooked so much in my life and Tom's cooking. We're, we're learning more. We're, we actually baked our own bread because it was hard to get bread for a while. And um, a lot of those things are starting to ease up a bit, which is nice. I did see a lot of toilet paper in my target run today. So that was good to see the shelves are getting stocked up and we can thank the essential workers for that. The truck drivers who are, driving and delivering all those things so that we can get them. Wow. What a crazy time. But, you know, you got to go with it. You got to go with the flow. You don't really have a choice, right? So you find connections like we have here. You find ways to connect with other people through the internet, social media, and uh, we just keep going. And eventually... We're going to be okay. And that's the truth. It's not the first time something like this has happened. And it may not be the last time, but I'll tell you what, if it happens again, we're all going to have a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> it's going to be the first thing all of us are going to go for. We're going to be like, what? Somebody cough? I'm going to stop at the store on the way home and get toilet paper. So, so you can see, I mean, this is a, this is a process, but it's a very relaxing process. And I hope some of you are coloring along with me. Let me just take a break here to just peek in at the comments and welcome everybody. It's great to see so many of you here. Yes. And hand sanitizer, right? We're going to, Let's let's all buy some hand sanitizer when this is all over. We'll keep the hand sanitizer people in business and, you know, have a couple extra bottles just put away. <laughs> and then we won't have to freak out because we'll have what we need. In our old house, we, um, you know, we lived through, and I know all of you did too, through the uh, 1999, you know, when the world was supposed to come to an end, when the clocks went or when the date changed to the year 2000. Um, and all the computers weren't supposed to understand it. So, you know, we had stocked up on a few things just in case it took a couple days for them to figure out. Because even something as simple as like if the cash registers couldn't work because um, you know, the date changed and it was weird and it took oh, a week or two for them to figure it out. We thought, okay, well, you know, we should probably have some pasta in the house and some extra paper towels and some toilet paper and stuff. And we were way more prepared for that than we were for this. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> that's because we had plenty of notice that 2000, the year 2000 was coming and, and, uh, and then it came and nothing happened. And then we had a lot of pasta to eat and a lot of toilet paper. But, you know, better safe than sorry, right? Now we're all learning. 
I kind of like this where the purple goes into that blue, especially like over in this area. It really does look the way a hydrangea looks. Hydrangeas come in so many colors. We had hydrangeas put in this year, last year, and um, they're not round hydrangeas. When we chose them, I asked them what color they were and some of them were white and I thought, oh, that would be really pretty. But they kind of come to a point at the top. They're really different and really pretty. So once they start to bloom, I will pick a few and I will show you guys what they look like. They're very interesting hydrangeas, but they're not round like this. They're not like a ball hydrangea. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are into flowers, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if they have a special name. Left that all up to the person who was helping us decide what plants to pick when we moved into this house. I don't know much about that. But I am learning. My spinach is growing. My kale is very hardy. My the, the plant that's growing the best for me, and I didn't expect it, is the bell peppers. Those things are doing so well, and I expected to have more trouble with those. I don't know why, but I just expected that they would be tough. And arugula is growing like crazy. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. So what do you guys think of that? Do you like the, those that purple on there? And you see now you don't even really notice that the sky was just... Um, you know, all behind it, but you can also see a little bit of the sky going through it. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to find a green. I'm going to use this simple Kelly green. I don't have a lot of Prismacolor pencils. I only have a small handful of them. I have another set of them that are, Tom and I have a little RV and, um, I have them in the RV and I was supposed to be in the RV several times since COVID and I expected to be able to get them. I left them in there because I wanted to have pencils. And then when COVID hit, <laughs> my first thought, my first weird thought was, oh no, what am I gonna do for colored pencils? So I just bought a few of my favorite colors. And you know what? I haven't had I haven't missed the whole gigantic set. I think just having a few colors that you really love and that you use a lot, I maybe have 30 colors, maybe not even, maybe 28 colors. But if you're if you're a really avid um, artist, then you need more than that. I don't need more than that. I just use my gamsol and that kind of makes the other colors for me. So I'm just kind of going out and blending that out. Add a little bit more in here. Just down on the lines a little bit and blend that. All right. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the green in here. I'm not gonna worry about blending that too much. I'm telling you, simple, simple cards. That's what you get here on my channel, simple cards. Let's see if I can erase that. I just got a little green on that petal. There we go. That's the Mono Sand Eraser. I really like that. It works for so many things. Not only does it get rid of little, you know, those thumbprint kind of smudges you get from ink on your cardstock. It, I mean, it's not gonna take the ink right out of the cardstock if you stamp an image, but if you get a little smudge, a finger smudge, like a little print, it can sand that off. But it also is really good for stray embossing powder. After you've embossed and you see a couple little sparkles here and there where you didn't intend it to be, you can use your um, your mono sand eraser to get rid of that. And then it also works really well for foil. So if you get foil somewhere where you don't want it or, you know, a little bit of transfer gel somewhere and it foils, you can sand that right off. And it also will sand a little colored pencil off if you 
colored something wrong like I just did. So, okay. Do a little bit more here. I could probably go in with a darker color and add some darker green. But again, you know, this is just, for me, it's just fun, it's relaxing, and I just wanna make this pretty window card. How have you guys been doing with getting your Christmas cards all signed and addressed? That's the hard part I have found. I've been enjoying making them on Monday nights with you guys, but I have not been putting enough time into getting them signed and in the envelope. So that should definitely be homework need to do that because I know I mean like last year I made a ton of Christmas cards but I just waited too long to start the job of addressing them and sending them out and even though I had all the cards I just ran out of time so if we do part of that work now we can really get those done all right just do a little more and welcome everybody. It's great to see you here. You can't work on Christmas cards until you receive your order. Oh, with the white cardstock. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for cardstock to come back in stock, and we actually um, have a shipment on the way. We have lots of shipments on the way, actually. The only thing that we don't have coming just yet is ink. Um, our company that manufactures our ink is still on complete lockdown. They can't, they cannot leave. They can't work at all. So I just talked to them today. In fact, they said, yeah, we know you have orders here and we're, we really want to get them done for you, but we just don't have any staff. We can't bring anybody back yet. I think they're one of the few places now that is completely not allowed to bring anybody back. I'm going to use a little bit of this um, lime peel. I don't know if I am. I'm just going to try it and see what it looks like. Ooh, I like that. That gives a little bit of yellow in there. I'm just adding a little bit in there. Kind of colored this one a little dark. I just like seeing that different color. In that green. I always wonder how much you can actually see on the live compared to when I post the pictures in the Facebook group. You can really see everything clear. I think even though in my regular videos, the photos are always so much more clear. All right, a little bit more here. I just like that, that yellowness of it. Okay, so there's my hydrangea. Not bad. All right, so now I'm going to, let's see, I have a question about ink. Let's see what this question is. Oh, that's what brand of colored pencils. I'm using Prismacolor pencils. Um, is there anywhere on the web that I can see samples of all the colors in one place on one page? You mean like all of our colors? You know, our colors are on our website in alphabetical order. Um, so they're not all in order. But I know that some of our, our members have made color charts, and I don't know if they've done them in alphabetical order or in color order. So if anybody has something like that and they'd like to share it with the Gina K Designs ink colors over on our Facebook group, I would love that. And for those of you that are new to me, I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube or on Facebook, but if you're on YouTube, we are actually on Facebook as well. We have a really fun group called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends, and we'd love you to come and join it. It's a super fun, very supportive group of stampers. And we share our Gina K Designs projects. Ooh, I see somebody, I'm gonna get rid of him. Delete the comment. Did I do it? I think I did, okay. Every once in a while we get a troll and I'm sorry, that happens on YouTube. Um, 
So if anybody sees a comment, there's let us know, you know, and, and I think Tom is watching and I know we have some of our moderators in and out. So, so yeah, but anyway, our group is called Jana K designs and stamp TV friends, and it is a super supportive group over there. So we would love to have you join us and see your Gina K designs projects. Okay. So now I'm going to do a layout for the card. Well, I also wanted to say, too, if you're on YouTube right now and you're on my channel, there's a little subscribe button and you subscribe to the channel. And there's also a little notification bell and you can hit that notification bell and you'll always be notified when I go live. You'll also be notified if I do a regular video, which I have a regular video coming up toward the end of the week. So. You can subscribe and get the notifications. All right, so now I'm going to cut this up. So I have this little We Are Memory Keepers um, paper cutter. And so my cardstock measures three and a half inches. So I'm going to cut that in half. And that's going to be one and three quarter inches. So I'm going to cut that. And then this card measures this way four and a half inches. So I'm going to cut it at two and a quarter inches. This is always the scary part is the cutting. Especially, you know, I never know if the paper cutters, I, I, just, I don't know. I never trust them. <laughs> I mean, it should be fine, but that should work. And I'm going to do the same thing at two and a quarter. So hopefully this is right. Does that look right? Looks pretty right, right? If not, we can make adjustments. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my little puzzle pieces here. And I'm going to get a piece of black cardstock. So here's a piece of black cardstock. And this cardstock measures, this is bigger than my usual edge. So that's, um, let me see here, I must read. Okay, I'm just making sure. You know what, I think, I think I'm gonna delete this comment because I don't think that that comment is meant for, um, maybe it is, I'm sorry if I deleted you, but we're getting, we get these comments that come in and I think it's because if I talk about something like coronavirus, it triggers something and uh, we get medical things going on in here. So I'm sorry if I deleted anybody's real comment. Just say it again if it's a real comment. Okay, so normally when I have a piece of white cardstock that measures three and a half inches, I just go up to the one eighth of an inch above it. But in this case, I'm going a full quarter of an inch above it. So for my three and a half inch white, I'm gonna to go to three and three quarters for my black. And for my four and a half inch black, I'm gonna go four and three quarters of an inch. So this is a full quarter inch. This is the way I used to do my layers when I first started stamping. And it had that big wide border. And that can be pretty sometimes, but I am just jazzed when it comes to this skinny border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to space these out evenly. And then once I get it laid out the way I want, I'm going to tape everything down. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm creating a window pane or a window, you know, the little cross thing. I think that's called a pane. I'm sure you guys will let me know what it's called and that creates that window look of course i have to tape it down really straight but that is kind of what i'm going for there that window look and that's really easy just to cut it like that rather than trying to find some kind of die for it okay oh there's karen hi karen high tower karen is one of our moderators over at the gina k designs and Stamp TV Friends Facebook page group. She's also our design team coordinator. So welcome, Karen. Karen always answers the questions that I don't see. And we also have our other moderators, Kathy Tidwell, and we have Barb, and we have Sammy. Okay, so I'm gonna put one down. Now, 
I like using the Gina K Designs tape for this. I like it because if it's not right, I can pick it up. I haven't pressed on it yet. I'm just getting it into position. And then once I know everything is right, then I'm gonna make it permanent. Let's see here. Does that look pretty good? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Looking good. All right, now I'll do the bottom ones. On my other card, I had to go in with a paper cutter and just trim a little bit off the bottom to make it look right, but you can do that. And one more. It's like doing a puzzle. And there we go. I think that one might just be able to go in a little bit more. Trying to get it straight. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is just trim a little bit off of this bottom. I might move this one up a little bit if I still can. I think I can, just a little bit. Just because when I looked at the bottom, they didn't seem to line up. Okay, that looks better to me. Does it look better? No. Oh my goodness. I might have to put more tape on. It's weird, like if you turn it, then it looks different. I should probably do it this way so I can see. All right, that looks good. That might be a little bit too much of a perfectionist. I'm working on that. Okay. So I'm gonna just trim a little bit off the bottom here because that you could see I started up a little higher. So I just want that to be a little more even at the bottom and just seriously a hair, but that just makes it feel like it's a little bit more even. So what do you guys think? Is that easy? And doesn't it look like a window? I think it looks like a window. I like it. All right, so now I'm gonna figure out what kind of greeting I wanna put on here. So the thing that's neat about the windows is, you know, if you have a greeting, I like this. I, I love this greeting. I hope you're my friend forever because that's how long I'm going to need you. <laughs> we all have those friends, right? So I'm going to use that one, I think. So I'm going to put my Misty, my cardstock in the upper right-hand corner of my Misty. Sweet friend is nice too. But this definitely says it. And we have this nice big open space up here for it. Okay. So I really want to make sure that stays in place in case I have to stamp it a second time. So let's get that back in there. Get the magnet. And then I'm going to use some of the black onyx ink for that. For these little greetings, I like to use an ink cube, especially after I've already um, mounted the card onto the card base. Everything's up a little bit higher or onto that black panel. All right, let me use my sleeve for this. Yeah. I hope you're my friend forever because that's how long I'm gonna need you. Perfect. That's a good saying. It's so true. Started connecting with friends on Zoom and uh, of course through Facebook, but I saw something really cool. Now, I don't know if they just rolled this out today or recently, maybe some of you guys have seen it already, but Facebook has a thing where in the Facebook group, you can go into a private room. I think you have to be the owner of the group possibly, but I'm not hundred percent sure. And you can, um, I just saw it like right before I went live and you can hang out with people from that Facebook group and kind of have like a private little video meeting. So I thought that was kind of cool. Everybody's trying to, to jump in and um, find ways to help us all connect. So now this is not going to be perfect 
side to side and up and down. So I'm gonna make it look more like a window by having it in the middle. So I have more white at the top, more white at the bottom, and then it's a little wider in the center, if that makes sense, like that. So I'm not gonna have it like up here where these three borders are even, I'm gonna bring it down so that it's a little bit closer to the sides, but has more distance on the top and the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tape for this. And see if I can get it straight. I made a, a, a regular video, I was working on it last night and my head got into the camera to redo a whole bunch of it. <laughs> That's pretty good. So what do you guys think? A window card. Is that what it looks like outside of your window right now? Oh, Deb, Deb asked about the dental floss trick. I didn't hear anything about the dental floss tip. What was it? Well, it wasn't my tip, but I know what it is. Um, so if you have your card stock already tacked down, taped down, rather than trying to pull it up and tearing the card, you can take a piece of dental floss and it's almost like you floss in between the two pieces of cardstock to remove the top layer from the layer underneath. And it does work. Um, it can be a little tricky depending on the kind of tape you use, but I guarantee you guys that if you haven't tried the Gina K Designs tape, this dot runner, I'm telling you, it is so nice. I don't know if you can see this, but you see the, the dots on there, right? So the difference between regular strip tape and dot tape, it's the same kind of adhesive, but the dots just separate it out into little tiny dots of adhesive. It makes it more forgiving because if you stick something to it, you know, and then you can pull it back up, you can see there's some little dots on the back of that white, but it doesn't tear the paper. But once you stick it down and you leave it there for a little bit, it becomes permanent. But the other thing that's nice is if you have a mono sand eraser and you have those dots there, right? You could take the mono sand eraser and you can erase those dots right off the paper. So let's say you, you know, you got mono, you, you got dots where you didn't want them. You can see now it's completely gone. There's nothing there. It's not sticky at all. So, so I like that. Okay, so that's my finished card. I wanna show you another card that I made. Um, so this one I was playing with last night. I did the same thing, but I used the um, You Make Me Smile stamp set. And we did another card like that very early into these lives. So I did the, the same layout, but with a different flower. So it's looking out a different window. And I guess like I should have done one in a different color, but I have purple on my brain today. So purple seemed like the deal tonight. So, wow. You wish there was more tape on the runners? Yeah, you know, it has a lot of tape on there, but I think the thing the, the thing is that I, use, I don't use very much tape when I tape things down unless I'm embossing. If I'm, if I'm embossing and the cardstock gets all warpy or I'm watercoloring, then I use a lot of tape. Otherwise, I just put it in the four corners and maybe one dot like in the middle. And, uh, you know, I find that they last pretty long time. I mean, this one has been, I think I changed this one live for you guys and I'm still using it. So. Yeah, I know. I mean, they could always be bigger, but I, I have trouble with the real big tape runners because I have arthritis in my joints. And so it makes it hard for me to hold the big tape guns. So I really like the size of this. It's ergonomic and there's a little spot on the top that's rubbery and it's where you put your finger and it's just very comfortable to use. So, and they do load and unload very easily if you're interested in a new tape runner. There's a little button on the bottom that says push and you push that button and then this whole cartridge comes out 
and then you put a new cartridge right back in and you just close it and it's ready to go. So very easy to load. I've struggled with some of the, the bigger guns with loading them. They kind of feel like a, like a serger to me or a sewing machine. Um, this, this is really, really easy. So that's the Gina K Designs Tape Runner. All right, so there's my finished card for the night. I certainly don't have time with only 10 minutes left to make another card, but um, here are the two of them, just so that you get the look with a different flower. And I will be taking photographs of these and putting them up on our Facebook page so you'll be able to see them a lot more closely and you'll be able to see a little bit more of the detail in the clouds. So tonight's theme was, let's see here, letting go of pent up emotion. And I do have a final quote for the night. I was talking to Alicia and Rena today because they both come to work with us every day and they've been packing your orders and Alicia is our master labeler. She can figure out addresses when they're typed in wrong. She goes on Google and she finds out exactly where you are to make sure that that package gets to you. So I really appreciate that. And we were talking a lot about letting go of pent up emotion because we all have it and we probably have it more now than ever because we don't have as much human interaction, people that we can just kind of talk to whenever we want. We're so used to that at work all day with everybody and we don't have that as much anymore. So my, um, my final quote for the night, and this will go up on my Facebook page. My quote of the night is, you can't force raging water to be calm. You have to leave it alone and return to its natural flow. Emotions are the same way. Let them flow so you can be calm again. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I absolutely love doing these lives and love being with you. On Friday night, we have our PJ party, and that's when we're going to be using the metallic cardstock and the metallic embossing powder. We're going to have a lot of fun together. Don't forget, it's PJ night. So wear your PJs, get comfortable, throw your hair up in a messy bun, and uh, let's have some crafty time on Friday together. You guys, in the meantime, have a wonderful evening. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you again real 